The star notation of the convolution is very convenient, but at the same time, it is a fatal death trap. Hi everyone, this is Jan Wilczek from thewolfsound.com and in this video I am going to show you the deadly trap of the star notation in convolution and how to avoid it. Let's imagine that we have an LTI system with impulse response h of n and input signal x of n. The output of such a system will be y of n given by the convolution between x and h. Now, what if we wanted to obtain a delayed version of the output? A natural move would be to substitute the argument of y and subsequently the arguments of x and h. But it's a trap. let's evaluate the right hand side of this equation. As we can see, we overshot the delay by a factor of 2. The correct way to write this is to substitute the argument of just one of the convolution operands. How to avoid such mistakes when performing some sort of calculations with convolution? Well, the way I go about it is to define helper functions. These are just temporary functions which I then substitute to obtain a simple form of the convolution with the star notation. Then I use the definition of convolution with these helper functions. And finally, substitute back the original functions with the newly obtained arguments. It is based to explain how this works through an example. Let's imagine that we have signal x and h, and we want to calculate the convolution of their delayed version. So signal x has delay nx and signal h has delay nh. We now define a helper function x1 of n, which is only delayed version of x. We do the same for h. Now we can substitute them in the star notation of convolution, then use the convolutional sum directly and finally substitute back the original x and h functions. As you can see, in all this process we are quite certain that we're doing the right steps and there is no guessing inside. I think another example will make it even more clear why these helper functions are so helpful. Let's consider that we want to again calculate a convolution between x and h, but this time h is time reversed. How to go about time reversed signal? Again, let's define a helper function. Now let's call it h2. This h2 can be directly substituted into the star notation. Then we can expand the star notation again according to its definition and then substitute the original function. Is it possible to guess the right answer right away? Probably yes, but when we're under the storm of many difficult derivations, there are a lot of variables and the indices may not be as clear to us, it is easy to get confused. Therefore, I think using these helper functions may be beneficial. I hope you can take this with you and if you're interested, please check out the associated article over at dewolfsound.com, which I link to in the description below. Other than that, if you found this tip useful, please subscribe, hit the thumbs up and don't forget to turn on notifications not to miss out on the upcoming videos on convolution. Thanks for watching and take care.